Hello, my name is Peter Parfit and welcome to the New Book Workshop and this final section of my three-part series about writer template work. Now, in the first video, you saw me using a template like this one and using this, I was able to make uh, a hole in this green piece of MDF and then uh, the plug that goes in that hole uh, made out of this different piece of MDF which you see there. That was the first video. Now, in the second video, I showed you how to go about making your own templates by hand and we did all sorts of things like this and little bits and pieces that all seem to fit together just about and in this final video I'm going to show you how to make a template on the CNC and the template that we're going to be making looks like this a triangular bit with smooth corners and a circle and that allows you to make two things one is a hole here which will take a plug and the plug is an interesting thing because it's got a piece like that looks like that and it fits exactly into that hole now this video is divided into two sorry about that and in this video we're going to use uh, the CNC which I have behind me now I produce all of my tool paths uh, using Vectrix Aspire now for everything I'm going to show you today, you could be also using Vectrix VCarve Pro or VCarve Desktop. They both have the same functionality that I'll be showing you with Aspire. So basically from within Vectrix Aspire program, I can produce the G-code files which are needed to be sent to the CNC. And I use in here a little program called Universal G-code sender, which then handles all of the file transfer and the handshaking between the computer and the CNC. And of course, you might be wondering why have writer templates uh, if you've got a CNC? Well, not everyone's got a CNC, but you might be the guy that a friend comes to and says, look, could you make me a template? Now, it, it may be if you're like me and setting up the CNC every time you need to use it just takes a few minutes. Uh, if you've got a writer template handy, then you can quickly grab that, grab your writer, make whatever it is, and away you go. Uh, this is my uh, piece of material that I'll, I'll be using as my template. Well, it's the first one. This is the trial go. And you notice I've got red lines here, here, here. Uh, this edge and that edge and that edge are all at dead right angles. And these are the reference edges for all work with this template. Uh, one ignores that edge completely. And the idea is that we're going to put uh, one uh, little template here for one part of the operation and then up here, or if you like, symmetrically down here, uh, we've got the other bit for the template work. So it means that if we had our piece of material fixed on a bench top in some way and some way of referencing uh, at least two of these edges so that we can then clamp this in place. We can do one operation, and then without moving those references, flip this over, the other template comes into play, and that allows us to do the second operation on that same piece of wood, and get those two operations absolutely overlaid uh, so it all lines up as it should be done. Right, we're now using Vectric Aspire, and the uh, first thing to do is set up the job size. Now, my piece of material is 130 millimeters wide, its height is 260, and its thickness is 11 millimeters. In actual fact, it's 10 and a half, but I'm telling you it's 11. The Z0 is at the top, and the XY date and position is bottom left hand corner, so that's fine. I'm now going to put in a couple of uh, guidelines. This is only for my own benefit, so, and it also helps me visualize things. So I'm just dragging a line down from the top, and that's going to be in the middle at 130. And I'll drag another guideline in from the left, and that's going to be at 65. So that gives me a dead center of my piece of material. First thing to do now is to create a circle. I'm going to put a circle uh, right in the middle. And I need to do three circles in total. And each of these has got to have a radius of 11 millimeters. So here's my first one. Now, I want to move this over. I'm going to move it to the right so that its left-hand edge is two millimeters to the right of that center line. So in other words, I've got to move it 
13 millimeters to the right. So it's a relative movement, and I'm just going to say X is 13, and then just press the apply, and that's moved it over, and I've got a 2 millimeter gap on the left there. I can now create a mirror image of this, and I'm going to flip it horizontal and note that I had create a mirrored copy set so that the original stays there where it was. I'm going to close that. I now need to find a way of placing my third circle, which is going to be uh, above these two circles. And the simplest way that I can think of is to draw a straight line between the centers of these two circles. So it's between the center of that circle. Note how the cursor knows when it's at the center of something. It changes its shape. There we are. So that's my line between those two uh, circle centers. Close that. I'm now going to select that line and I'm going to rotate it. Now, if I rotate that line by 60 degrees and I'm going to rotate it relative to its bottom left hand corner, in other words, the left hand side of the line by 60 degrees, then the right hand end or the upper end of that line is where the center of the third circle should be. And I can draw that now. There we go. My cursor's found where the end of that line is, and there's my circle. I can now delete that construction line. So there we are. Delete that, select that line, press the delete button, and then it's gone. I now need to have a scheme so that I can draw the lines which go uh, between the, the lower two circles and the one above. And the simplest way I thought of again was to draw a little line uh, which is a, a radial line from this first circle. And I'm then selecting it. If I zoom in a little bit, this may become a little bit clearer. There we go. So I've selected that line. I'm now going to rotate that line by 150 degrees. And the end of the line then will give me the point on the circumference of this circle where my line should begin that should match or meet up with the circle above. So that's that line. If I were to copy this line now, and I'm going to copy it and take the copy up to the center of the upper circle. So I'm going to copy it move it up to there. Now the ends of those two lines, uh, which are on the circumferences of those two circles, if I join those, here I go. See how the cursor's changed? And again, the cursor will change. Yep, that's it. So there's my line. And that now is a tangential line to the two circles. I can get rid of my two construction lines. There they go. Now that line I've just drawn, if I now make a mirror image of that, Go to the mirror tool, and again, it's creating a mirrored copy, and I'm going to flip horizontal, and there that is. So that's those two lines. The third line is dead easy because it's just between uh, the bottoms of these two circles, and again, my cursor will show me when it's there, select it, and there's that line done. I now need to cut away the parts of those circles that I don't need. So I use the scissor tool and just cut those away. And you can now see I've got that triangular shape that we've seen already. So I'm just saving this in case something goes wrong. I'm now going to create a circle which will be not dead center, but uh, slightly offset uh, in the center of, these, of this uh, triangle. So I'm going to give it a radius of 12 millimeters. Uh, initially, it's created the job dead center. I'm going to now move that circle up. I'm going to move it up by 10 millimeters. Now, this circle is uh, not dead center uh, in the uh, up and down direction. It's dead center left to right. And that's all I need it to be. So I'm not attempting to make it absolutely central to that triangle. So there that is. I don't actually use this later, but at this stage, when I was doing this drawing, I created the circle uh, uh, with, with a two millimeter radius. 
in the center here. And originally, my thought was I have the ability to put a screw hole through something. But of course, uh, you wouldn't have one of those in a template. So anyway, uh, just ignore the fact I'm putting this little uh, two millimeter radius circle in there. So I've got a construction line now, which I've put down uh, just here. And I'm now going to move my triangular uh, uh, diagram and its circles uh, down to get it into the lower portion of where the template will be. So here it goes down there and that's it. So I've now moved that whole arrangement down there. Now the reason that it's down there is that uh, half of the template is going to be on this part of the material and the other half will be up here and that will be done by flipping the uh, piece of material in the CNC uh, between the two cuts of the tool parts. If I go back to this triangle I need to produce an offset and it's an offset going outwards of nine millimeters. Uh, nine millimeters is the uh, offset that I'll be using when using the router to cut these shapes. And I'm going to do the same for the circle outwards to the right offset and there we go. So I've now got two offset lines one for the triangle one for the circle. I'm selecting the a triangular one. I'm now going to go to the toolpath menu and I'm choosing a profile toolpath. I want to cut to the depth of 11 millimeters using a 6.35 millimeter cutter which I've selected. Note you can select all sorts of parameters and change them here if you need to about, about speed and uh, rate of cut and so on and so forth. My cut needs to be on the inside uh, I'm not having any tabs because I'm using double-sided tape to use the keep the pieces in the middle from running around. And I'm going to give this a meaningful name, triangle. And I'm now going to say 635 end mill, which reminds me what tool should be in the router when I do the cut. And there you see that cut. And that looks the right shape for my template. That's good. And after I've done this, the next thing to do is to close that and save this toolpath. When you press the save, you have the option to say what post-processor you want. Now, I do everything in G-code, uh, but there's loads and loads of different uh, tools which uh, you can set the post-processor for. Mine is the XCARV millimetric G-code. So there it is. Save in the right place. That's done. So I can now close that, turn to my 2D drawing. I'm going to select the, uh, the circle to be cut out of the other part of the material. There it is. And I go to the same toolpath again. I want to do a profile toolpath. There it is. I'm going to use the same cutter, same cut depth. Everything else is the same. Inside, yep, fine, no tabs straight down, all I've got to do is give it a name. Now I'm going to give it a meaningful name, flip. And I need to flip my piece of material in the CNC before this cut is done. And I'm calling it flip circle 635 end mill. So I know everything about that tool path that I need to know. And the flip reminds me to flip my material over because otherwise I'll have what you see now, everything in the same place, which is not what I want. Now, uh, you can just uh, preview the one toolpath you just created. I've reset it. Uh, you can go up to this area. You could either single step through a toolpath creation or uh, you press the left hand button there and you can see the whole thing done. And again, there's our circle, all nice and neat. So we'll just close that now and then remember to save it. That's G code as before. Save the toolpath, and that's that toolpath saved. So that actually now is everything we need to do. I'm just going to do a final save in case I need to come back to this, and now we can look at getting it machined. Mm -hmm.